Hello everyone. Uh, not too long ago I put up a how-to blacksmithing video on how to make a hand-forged leaf and I wanted some viewer feedback in my video so I said the first person to win that leaf or the first person to give me a good suggestion for my videos will win the leaf. And the first person to comment, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but the first person to comment said you really should make a, uh, a Chevy symbol, that would, that would be pretty cool. And I thought, oh, that was strange. Honestly, that really wasn't off what I was expecting at all. Um, if I were to have guessed, I would have, I would have expected someone to say, I want to see how to forge a knife, because everyone always wants to forge a knife. But anyway, I got to thinking about it, and I said, you know, this could be a good opportunity. And some people might call this cheating, but I see it as a, another opportunity for a, another video. I'm standing by my oxycetylene torch cutting outfit. It's actually not just for cutting, but it's my, my torch outfit. Um, and I say, well, what I'll do, I'll use my oxycetylene torch and I'll cut a Chevy Sybil out of a piece of plate steel and I'll do a video on how to use a cutting torch. So some basics, I did a video, if you look way back, I believe it was one of the Home Shop Tips series, I did a uh, oxyacetylene torch video, but it was pretty basic, it just covered setting some pressures and lighting the torch, nothing really too fancy, so I suggest watch that video, watch a lot of other videos, get some books, um, because this is extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Compressed gas and a fuel gas especially is very dangerous and pure oxygen is also very dangerous. So read up and make sure you're fully aware of all the safety hazards and how to and how to uh, prevent yourself from getting hurt. So this is this is my setup. It's a really cheap Harbor Freight cart. Um, it works good for staying right here, but if you're going to go buy a cart, I might suggest to build one or buy a better one. It's pretty, it's pretty flimsy. This is a 200, I think it's a 240 cubic foot oxygen tank, and I can't really see it down there, but I have a 120, 140 cubic foot acetylene tank. They both have their own regulators, and the thread fitting on the regulator is different between the two, so you can't cross an oxygen regulator with an acetylene regulator. So acetylene hoses are different from propane and I think propylene and some other fuel gas hoses. The lining is different. If you use the wrong fuel with it, the lining might break down. Let's talk a little bit more in depth about each particular component of an oxyacetylene cutting torch. So first let's talk about a couple basic tools of the trade here. One thing you'll need is a pair of Shade 5 safety glasses. The Shade 5 will allow you to see everything pretty easily, but it will prevent your eyes from being damaged by the ultraviolet radiation given off by the bright, intense oxyacetylene flame. A lot of people don't like to use these, and I honestly, I think you're kind of stupid for not wanting to use them, because you can see plenty. If you get a good pair, this is like a pet pair of sunglasses when you put them on. They look dark in the video, but you can see everything. And they protect your eyes, and it just makes it easier. Because if you look at the flame without these glasses, you just see a big ball of white-blue light. And that's what makes someone into a really bad torch cutter. They can't see what they're doing, so they make a mess of things. And I've got two different torch sparkers here. This is a conventional one. I'm sure all of you have seen that. Then I did another quick little video of this thing a while ago. A little trigger pistol grip. The flint must be getting old. It's not making a spark every time. Anyway, this thing is pretty cool. It's a lot easier to use than this conventional style. 
And I didn't grab any, but of course you're, you're probably going to want some gloves to keep the sparks off your hands. And the last little maintenance tool that's handy to have is a tip cleaner. There's just a variety of, they're basically really, really tiny little files. And they're in a variety of different sizes. So the way you use this, you just find the one that fits the jet hole in the, your torch tip. Whoops. Find one that fits the hole of your, of your torch. Now this isn't a cutting torch tip, this is a just a welding tip. But you just slide it in there. And you work it in and out like a file. To take out any of the carbon and slag that might be in there. And then I use this little, little file guy. To file the tip flat, take off any burrs, and I use this little, little corner in here kind of chamfer the corner a little bit of the hole. Pretty pretty easy, pretty basic and straightforward. So those are some basic tools and uh, some safety equipment that you'll need for oxycetylene torch cutting. Okay, here's the cutting torch in close-up. If you were to go and buy a generic uh, oxycetylene torch starter kit. This is most likely what you'll have for a cutting torch. This is sort of a convertible model because the torch handle, which is this part, and the cutting head, which is the other part, are separate. You can undo this screw and they come apart. The other kind of cutting cutting torch, which you'll see on a more dedicated cutting torch cutting outfit, there's no connection here. This is all one piece. And it does away with uh, one of these oxygen valves. And I'll go into detail a little bit in a minute. So, what's nice about this is that you can just, by hand, there's O-rings in there so it seals easily. You can take this off. Now you have your torch handle separate from your cutting head. And if you want to do some other work, let's say you want to braze or weld, or do some spot heating. You have a torch tip like this, the mixer on it with the rotating collar there, and you can thread that on. Now you have a, a torch or a um, you know welding tip. Now the because of that of this style, the torch handle itself has has two knobs. There's an oxygen knob indicated by the green dot and a fuel knob with the red. And you use these two knobs to control the amount of fuel and, and oxygen you get when you're using a, uh, a tip like this. However, when you're using an oxyacetylene cutting torch, you want to be able to deliver full oxygen pressure with the push of this lever. And for those who don't know, the oxycetylene cutting tip is composed of three nozzles, or uh, six nozzles going around in a circle with one big nozzle in the center. Those six smaller jets receive mixed fuel and oxygen and burn with a flame and create heat, the heat. But when you press the lever, this lever here, it depresses that valve and allows pure oxygen to come out of that center jet. And when you heat the steel with, with the flame, you get it about uh, red, orange, hot. And you depress the lever and let the oxygen come out. That oxygen will actually burn the carbon in the steel and it will burn the metal away. It's a misconception that, that you're just melting metal away and blowing it away with oxygen. You're actually burning the steel. It's, it's combusting. So anyway, put this back together here. You want the, this cutting torch head to receive all the oxygen that the regulator will supply to it. So what you do is you open the oxygen valve completely until it stops. 
and that will deliver all the oxygen to the mixer here. And then when you're lighting your, your flame, you adjust this oxygen knob and that fuel knob. And then when you're ready to cut, you press that lever, which delivers oxygen through one of these tubes out here. You'll see there's three tubes. I believe one's for oxygen and gas for the heating, and then the last tube is for the pure oxygen for the cutting. So that's how the, uh, the cutting torch works. And on a torch that isn't convertible, that doesn't have this collar, this nut here, there's just a fuel knob, an oxygen knob, and a lever. There isn't any secondary oxygen knob. And also on this torch, there are, I also have check valves on the torch head, the same um, uh, anti-backfire check valve as I have on the regulator. I don't think it's necessary at all to have both the torch style and the regulator style um, valves, backflow valves on here, but that's just how my particular setup is. And another thing of note is the fuel, see the notch on the thread on the uh, hex there? That means it's left hand thread, and this is right hand thread, which means you can't flip flop these two fittings, which is another idiot proof mechanism to help keep you safe. Okay, this is the oxygen regulator on my tank. It's a Herix, or Harris, excuse me, 25GX. It's a, it's a medium duty regulator, better than the ones I used to have on it a couple of years ago. Um, I'm happy with them, quality's good. I don't use them that much, so I can't comment too much on them, but I'm happy with them so far. And then right there you'll see a, uh, I believe it's called a blowback valve or a flashback valve. I'm not entirely sure what the proper term is. Basically, in the event of a uh, burn back of, of flame traveling back through your hose up towards the regulator, that valve will prevent the flame front from going any further into the regulator or into the tank. It seems pretty rare to me because one hose has pure oxygen in it and the other hose has pure fuel in it and neither one of them will burn on their own. But if you do a couple incorrect things, I suppose it is possible. Um, so, to, to use the regulator, uh, there's, well, there's, there's, two, there's two gauges. This gauge, the one closest to the tank, tells you the pressure of, of the gas inside the tank. And the second gauge, further away from the tank, tells you the pressure of the gas being delivered out to your torch. An oxygen tank, a brand new oxygen tank will, uh, let's see, I believe it's about 2,000 PSI, and an acetylene tank will be about 200 PSI. And that does de vary depending on uh, temperature. In the winter, your pressure will be a lot lower than in the summer without changing the actual amount of gas inside the tank. So, oh, and one other imp very important thing, all these fittings, all these threads and connections, dry. No oil, no Teflon tape, no pipe dope, nothing. If it leaks, that means that the metal-to-metal -metal seal is defective and it should be cleaned up or replaced. The most important thing is not to use oil, especially on an oxygen tank, because oxygen and oil, now you have the two components necessary for combustion. All you need is a source of ignition. So to turn on the tank, or open up the tank, very gently crack the valve open slowly. You don't want to open it too fast and, and spike that pressure needle up too quickly, just like so. So you see this tank is not all the way full. We got about 750 pounds in there, 
PSI, that's the correct term. And then on the oxygen tank, open the valve all the way until it stops. I believe that's due to the design of the packing in the valve. You could have oxygen leak past the packing and out if you don't open this all the way. And now the tank is open, but there is no supply pressure. So you change that by turning in or out the regulator. Regulators are opposite of valves. When you turn them in clockwise, that'll increase the outlet pressure. So we'll want to open the oxygen valve on the torch to allow it to flow and turn in. See now I got some pressure at about 25 PSI or 20 PSI. And the reason you want to let it flow is because the pressure you see on the gauge between flowing and not flowing will be different and that's especially noticeable on the acetylene gauge because you use acetylene at a lower pressure. All right, well that just about covers the basics of it and if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up or leave a comment if you'd like and make sure to check out part two where I'll cover lighting the torch, setting the flame to the, to the proper setting, and then some techniques on how to actually cut some steel. Thanks for watching and come back for more.